Item number SCP-1981 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1981 is to be kept inside a secure video storage unit at the Media Archive of Site When in use, SCP-1981 should not be removed from its casing or exposed to any strong magnetic sources. A Betamax home video system and an analog television has been provided in Observation Theater 02 at Site as well as video equipment to record viewings. Description SCP-1981 is a standard Betamax tape. Ronald Reagan cut up while talking has been handwritten on the adhesive sticker in felt tip pen. Laboratory analysis indicates that SCP-1981 is made of ordinary material and serial numbers correspond with home cassette tapes produced in September of 1980. SCP-1981 was initially encountered by a filing clerk in the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in 1991 who upon watching it alerted the police with the intent to find the tape's creator to press obscenity charges. A low-level police investigation was conducted, at which point the Foundation was alerted and secured SCP-1981. Class A amnesics were administered before could be notified. Further investigation of the library's records by Foundation personnel failed to yield any leads on SCP-1981's origin. SCP-1981 appears to be a home video recording of former United States President Ronald Reagan delivering his Evil Empire speech to the National Association of Evangelicals at Sheraton Twin Towers Hotel, Orlando, Florida, on March 8, 1983. However, at 1 minute and 10 seconds, the speech begins to deviate heavily, eventually resembling no known speech ever made by Reagan. Beginning at approximately five minutes, multiple incisions, lacerations, and penetration wounds can be seen being slowly inflicted, though no corresponding source of these wounds is visible. Despite suffering bodily harm that would likely incapacitate an ordinary person, Reagan will continue to deliver his speech until either his vocal cords are severed or the tape degrades to static at 22 minutes and 34 seconds. Upon rewinding SCP-1981 and initiating playback, Reagan will deliver an entirely new speech, often radically different from the ones previously observed. Topics have included torture, child molestation, and ritual sacrifice. Trauma inflicted upon Reagan also appears to be divergent, with impalement, genital mutilation, and having all been observed. In roughly one in seven viewings of SCP-1981, a figure clothed in black robes with a conical hood will have replaced a random member of Reagan's press detail, henceforth referred to as SCP-1981-1. The significance of the appearance of SCP-1981-1 is currently unknown. The speeches delivered by Reagan are mostly incoherent, lacking any sort of underlying thematic structure and largely being composed of nonsensical anecdotes and parables. However, Occasionally, references are made to future events that Reagan could not possibly have known about or predicted, such as the September 11 terrorist attacks, the result of the 2008 Russian elections, and For this reason, rigorous time and effort has been devoted to recording the speech delivered on each playback. Attempts to replicate SCP-1981 onto a similar Betamax tape have met with failure. However, Cameras used to record the television SCP-1981 is broadcasted on have succeeded in capturing individual playbacks. Any observations performed on SCP-1981 must be recorded on the camcorder provided and delivered for subsequent review to Dr. Bl Project Supervisor. Years of natural magnetic interference has severely degraded SCP-1981's signal quality, making it even more difficult to sift meaningful information from playbacks. Additionally, the gruesome nature of the mutilations performed upon Reagan have been described as extremely disturbing, and for this reason it is recommended that any personnel feeling squeamish or ill after playback visit the on-site psychiatry facility for a level 3 evaluation. As Ronald Reagan was alive at the time of SCP-1981's containment, a surveillance net was deployed to establish any relation between him and SCP-1981. No known connection was developed, though Reagan would frequently complain about nightmares before his mental state degenerated due to Alzheimer's. Excerpt from video transcript of recording made on 
1993. A renewal of the traditional values that have been the tendons of this country's strength. One recent survey by a Washington-based researcher concluded that Americans were far more willing to participate in cannibalism than they have in the past hundred years. America is a nation that will not suffer abominations lightly. 7. And that is the core of the awakening. 12. 18. We will stop Al-Qaeda. Now there you go again. For the first time we have risen and I see we are being consumed. I see circles that are not circles. Billions of dead souls inside containment. Unravelers have eaten countries moral fabric, turning hearts into filth. I'm from a kingdom level above human. What does that yield? A hokey smile that damns an entire nation. There is no hope. Reagan winces back as if experiencing severe pain. Several new lacerations begin to manifest across bare eye socket, as well as punctures appearing to penetrate forehead and temples. Remainder of left arm is now cleanly bisected. Further consensus has proven that over half of all Americans still hate. Eaten whole by void. The emptiness. The sadness. The blackness. The darkness. <laughs> End transcript. Excerpt from video transcript of recording made on 1996. I have been to the steel mills of Alaska and the cornfields of Nebraska. I have seen the derelict offices of Google burn with the window boarded up and the squatters inside them. I've seen the houses where they cut up the little babies. From coast to shining coast, I have walked empty down drooling path. The decaying flesh of false morality poisoning our children. I have stood atop the mountain of this greedy earth, looking upon our beautiful pious pit, filled to bursting with the vast hands of helplessness. And did you know what I saw? Hell. <laughs> now there you go again. But truly now, we live in a fortunate time. This is a fortunate time. Time is on our side. <laughs> a stitch in nine saves time. There are your truths and there are my truths. There are known knowns known unknowns, and unknown slobber Some of them are in the audience right now. At this stage, wounds inflicted upon Reagan's neck appear to be so severe that it can no longer support the head. Speech degenerates into gurgles as Reagan violently jerks forward, spine being severed cleanly and the head only being loosely connected to the body by strands of muscle tissue. Body remains animate for the next three minutes and continues to gesture as spinal column appears to be withdrawn from neck cavity before finally collapsing. Tape degrades into static at 22 minutes and 34 seconds. End transcript. Video transcript of recording made on 2002. Redacted. 05 level clearance required. Video transcript of recording made on 2005. Begin transcript. Long shot of podium as well as empty chairs normally occupied by Reagan and Entourage. Curiously, this is the only recording that lacks both the intertitles and the presence of Ronald Reagan. 30 seconds. Camera zooms in on podium. 2 minutes 55 seconds. Entity known as SCP-1981-1 enters shot from left and stands at podium. Remains motionless for remainder of film. 22 minutes, 34 seconds. Tape flashes to single frame intertitle with words, I see you, colored in red. Holds for 7 seconds, then immediately cuts to static. No further signal for remainder of tape. End transcript. Note, this is the last known sighting of SCP-1981-1. SCP-1981-1 has been absent in all subsequent playbacks. If observed, 
Staff are advised not to attempt to communicate with SCP-1981-1 and to alert any Level 4 supervisors on duty.